Hello everyone, this is Ross, founder of Odyssey Espresso. Today I'm going to walk you through how to switch between spring and direct configurations or between multiple different springs on your Argos. So we'll start off by underneath your machine you will find a small allen key that's held in magnetically to a groove under there. So we'll pull that allen key out and we'll use that to remove these four screws on the top. So I will start with the short end going in, just going through and breaking all these screws loose. And then you could flip it the other way around and just spin it around really fast to take all these screws out quickly. So once all these screws are out, your piston assembly, you can just twist it back and forth a little bit and this whole thing will slide up out of your group head. You might want to grab a towel or a rag or something because if you've just pulled some shots, it'll be a little wet and so you'll just want to like capture some of that. You can even wipe it out. Uh, but I'd recommend wiping off the grease, the water from your O-rings here. And now's a great time to just take a visual inspection of your O-rings, make sure there's no tears or nothing's uh, wrong with them they need to be replaced and they should be good for quite a while so we'll remove this and go from there so once your piston assembly is removed we're first going to remove the chicago bolt up top on this upper spring clevis so you'll need to grab another three millimeter hex key or three millimeter driver i like these they're very easy to use and so We'll loosen it and you'll find that one side will come out much easier than the other and that's normal. So next I'd recommend you grab a towel or something similar to place the piston on. And so I'll usually stand over top and I will press down with my hand. The spring is under a little bit of tension so we'll need to compress it slightly to be able to push out this other side. And so you can use the hex key to slide it in and while you push you'll see that press out you'll need to push again to pull your hex key out and then you can relieve the spring tension and so now you can see this upper clevis piece will slide up your spring can slide up now we have access to these two Chicago screws down on the bottom here I'm going to remove this towel just for sake of visibility. And so what you'll do is you'll go ahead and with your two tools, and I'll even use another hex key just to show, you'll put one on either side, loosen it, and same thing. One will twist out very easily. The other you can press out with your hex key. So now once we've got that out, we can easily slide our spring off. Um, and so I'll go ahead and grab, uh, we've been labeling our spare springs by just writing on the top side. Uh, you could insert it either way that you like. So if I want to go from my original eight bar spring to my six bar spring, um, as you can see there, I will go ahead and slide that back on. We will install back together how we had it so we'll put one side of the barrel screw in and now anytime you've uh, you're swapping these parts out it's always a good practice to add some additional lubricant uh, all the machines ship with a small packet of molly coat uh, grease and this is a, a food grade grease and so again we'll use our two allen keys just to tighten this up and so as we tighten, if you over tighten it, you'll find that it might not twist very well. And so all you'll do is just back it off slightly until you do get some motion without a lot of friction in there. So that's good. And so to reinstall your spring, we'll slide everything back down. Make sure that your spring slides into the piston or into the, um, uh, yeah, your piston and sits flat. The top, you'll see there's a small little 
counterbore up here, a little recession, which is what the spring sits in. So you'll just make sure the spring, and that helps keep the spring centered. You make sure it sits in there. And so to reinstall this lever, we'll slide into the clevis, how we have it, with these bushings. And then, can you actually hand me that screw that dropped? And so what we'll do, and this might be a little tricky to figure out at first, uh, but you'll take the barrel end of your screw, you'll insert it into the first side, and so what we're going to do is, while we compress the assembly, we compress that spring with our palm, we're going to, I like to pull out on the lever arm, and then I use my index finger, or you could use your thumb if you do it on the other side, so you'll want to pull these aligned, and when you get them aligned, you'll push that in. So I always kind of push it in, get a little tension so that when they align, it pops right through. And that's all the way through. And then you can go ahead and take the other portion of your Chicago screw, insert it in, and screw it all back together. Um, and so now I'm going to take it back apart and show you how to swap from spring to the direct. So from this point, I'm going to show you how to go from spring to direct. Uh, and so as we showed before, this is how you disassemble the lever arm and we'll remove the spring. We will also remove the spring cover and we'll have these separated. So next up, we will need to remove the piston linkage. So again, with your two Allen keys, we'll break it loose. Remove one and the other. So just to note, the two Chicago screws in the linkage part are the same size. The one for the upper clevis is slightly longer. So just something to keep in mind while you're removing everything. So for the spring configuration, we use the upper hole, uh, but for direct, we will use the lower one. So we'll go ahead and just slide this out. We'll align the lower hole of the assembly. We'll drop our screw back in. Oops. So I'll try to start this by hand, or I can get it to sit on top. So again, uh, it's always great to grease these when you're putting them back together. You can use uh, just your finger, put some grease through it, or a little Q-tip, put some grease on it, and that way the bushings are, are always lubricated. And so I'm going to go ahead and tighten this down. I can tighten this one a pretty good bit, and I see it still moves freely, so that's great. Now here's where things get a little bit different. And so what we're going to do is first slide, uh, or first we're going to take note of our uh, air bleed valve. And so we want this air bleed valve to always face the lever, to face the user. So in this case, I'm going to set it down so it's facing this direction. Now I'll go ahead and take my spring cover, I'm going to slide it over top, and then now I'll take my lever arm. And this time, we're going to line up the middle pin, and we'll put our screw back in. See, so it helps to look on the side, install that. We'll go ahead and drop our other part of the screw on top. Go ahead and tighten that down. So again, what I'll do is I'll tighten it enough so it's kind of binding up here. It doesn't really move freely. So I will then back it off just a hair until this now moves. So 
then we'll go and we'll lift the spring cover up and align it with the bottom holes on your lever arm. We'll insert that screw again. Now, all these screws, you'll notice a little tiny uh, black washer on them, and that is a, um, a sort of a, a hard plastic washer, and that allows it so that when you tighten these screws, uh, they're less likely to back off. Um, so this one, I can go ahead and tighten it quite a bit. And so now we have this in the direct configuration, uh, where when you lift up the handle, the piston will also rise. And then just to reiterate, the air bleed valve is facing the direction of the lever arm. And that's how we want it. So as the water flows in, it doesn't immediately block that off. And so now I'll show you the full installation procedure. So to reinstall into your machine, we'll first grab some Molly Coat grease. This is the 111 compound food grade. So I'll grab a little bit on my finger and all the machines ship with a small packet. Uh, but I'll just go ahead, and just a small amount, just wipe it on these O-rings. Probably do a little bit more. So I'll try to wipe them all the way around. And now all we'll do is we'll take, we'll support the piston and we will slide it in, make sure the lever arm is pointed away from the machine. We'll slide this down, and so we have a nice chamfer on the top that helps compress and lead those O-rings in. And so we'll go ahead and wipe the grease off my fingers, but I'm gonna grab the first screw, and so with these aligned by eye, you can just get a screw started by hand, grab your Allen key, and thread that in. This one I won't go all the way tight, but I'm going to put it snug just to keep this thing held in place. And now I can go and I can align the other screws and install these. And I'll actually skip the last ones. Then after they're all roughly installed, the short end of the Allen key, go ahead and just tighten them down just a little bit. You, know, you don't need to hulk on it, just two fingers. Make sure that's snug. And in a going across, you'll tighten them all down. Uh, but now you have your machine in a direct configuration. So you lift up, water fills the chamber, and then the user applies the pressure. Thank you.